What are interesting differences in culture, if you can comment on, between Google, Dropbox, and Microsoft from a Python programming perspective, all places you've been to, the positive? Mm -hmm. well, is, is there a difference or is it just about people and there's great people everywhere? Or is there culture differences? So Dropbox is much smaller than the other two in your list. Yeah. So that, that is a big difference. The set of products they provide is more is narrower, so they're more focused. And Smaller code base. Yeah, part. and and Dropbox sort of, at least during the time I was there, had the tendency of sort of making a big plan, putting the whole company behind that plan for a year, and then evaluate, and then suddenly find that everything was wrong about the plan and then they had to do something completely different. Mm -hmm. And so there were, there was like the annual engineering reorg was, was sort of an unpleasant tradition at Dropbox because like, oh, there's a new VP of engineering. And so now all the directors are being reshuffled. And this guy was in charge of, of infrastructure one year and the next year he was made in charge of, I don't know, product development. <laughs> it's fascinating because like, you don't think about these companies internally, but I, you know, Dropbox to me from the very beginning was one of my favorite uh, services. There's certain like programs and online services that make me happy, make me more efficient and all that kind of stuff. But one of the powers of those kinds of services, they disappear. They, you're not supposed to think about how it all works, but it's incredible to me that you can sync stuff effortlessly across so many machines so quickly and like don't have to worry about conflicts. They, they, they take care of the, you know, as a person that comes from uh, version repositories and all that kind of stuff or merge is, is super difficult and uh, just keeping different versions of different files is very tricky. The fact that they could take care of that is just, I, I don't know. Yeah. The the engineer behind the scenes must be super difficult, both on the computer infrastructure and the software. A lot of internal sort of hand-wringing about things like that. Mm -hmm. But the the product itself always worked very smoothly. And still yeah. does. Well, there's yeah. probably a lot of lessons to that. You can have a lot of turmoil inside on the engineering side, but... If the product is good, the product is good, and don't maybe don't mess with that either. To, you know, when it's good, keep it's like with Google. Focus on the search and the ads, <laughs> right? Like and the, the money will come. Yeah, and to make sure that's done extremely well, and don't forget what you do extremely well. And in, in what ways do you provide value and happiness to the world? Make sure you do that well. Um, is there something else to say about Google and Microsoft? Microsoft has had a very fascinating shift recently mm -hmm. with a new CEO, uh, what you know, recent CEO with purchasing GitHub, embracing open source culture, embracing the developer culture. It's pretty interesting to see. That's like why I joined Microsoft. I mean, after, after retiring and thinking that I would stay retired for the rest of my life, which of course was a ridiculous thought. Mm -hmm. But I was, I was, I was done working for a bit, and then the pandemic made me realize that work, work can also uh, provide a, a source of fulfillment, keep you, keep you out of trouble. <laughs> uh, Microsoft is a very interesting company because it has this incredible, very long and varied history, and this amazing catalog of products that many of which also date way back. I mean, I've been, been talking to a bunch of Excel people lately and Excel is like 35 years old. Yeah. And they can still read spreadsheets that, that they might find on an old floppy drive. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there's, man, there've been so many incredible tools through the years. Excel, one of, one of the great, shames of my life <laughs> is that I've never learned how to use Excel well. I mean, it just always felt like so many features are there. It's a, similar with IDEs like PyCharm. It feels like I, I converge quickly to the dumbest way to use a thing to get the job done when clearly there's so much more power at your fingertips. Yeah. 
But there's, I, I, I do think there's probably expert users of Excel. And it's oh, like, yeah, that Excel is a cash cow, actually. Oh, it actually brings in money. Oh, that's <laughs> interesting. <laughs> yeah. A lot of the engineering, sort of, if you look deep inside Excel, there's some very good engineering, very, very impressive stuff. Okay, now I need to definitely learn Excel a little <laughs> better. I had issues because I'm a keyboard person, so I had issues coming up with shortcuts. I mean, Microsoft sometimes, uh, it's changed over the years, but sometimes they kind of want to make things easier for you on the surface and therefore make it harder for like uh, people that like to have shortcuts and all that kind of stuff to optimize their workflow. Now, Excel is probably, people are probably yelling at me. It's like, no, Excel probably has a lot of ways to optimize the workflow. In, but. in fact, I keep discovering that there are many features in Excel that only exists at keyboard shortcuts. Yeah, that's the sense I have. And now, like, I'm embarrassed that it's just... <laughs> you just have to know what they are. Yeah. That's, that's like, there's no logic or... Or, or reason to the assignment of the keyboard shortcuts because they they go back even longer than 35 years. Can you maybe comment about such and Adela and how hard it is for a CEO to sort of pivot a company towards open source or developer culture? Is there something you could see about like, how what's the role of leadership in such a pivot and definition of a new vision? I've never met him, but uh, I hear He's just a really sharp thinker, but he also has an incredible business sense. He took the organization that had very solid pieces, but that was also struggling with all sorts of shameful things, especially the Steve Ballmer time. I imagine in part through his personal charm and thinking, and of course the the great trust that that the the rest of the leadership has in him he managed to to really turn the company around and sort of change it from from openly hostile to open source to to actively embracing open source and that doesn't mean that suddenly excel is going to go open source but that means that there's room for a product like vs code which is open source yeah, it's fascinating. It, it gives me faith that large companies with good leadership can grow, can expand, can change and pivot and so on and develop. Because uh, it gets harder and harder as the company gets large. 